Hey y'all, happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. We'll be talking about the problem with fake it until you make it. I wanna talk about that a little because I do think it has side to it that can have the opposite effect of what you think it's having. And if you rock with me every week, go ahead and say good morning. So excited to be serving you guys this morning. So if this is your first time, my name is Alicia and I help leaders lead their careers. And I'm definitely excited to come to you this morning and talk a little bit about this, this saying that we kind of hear all the time. Because I just believe that you get to a point in your career that you are not faking it. And I think it's really important to make sure that, you know, when you want to take on these little cute sayings and things of that sort, that you understand like what is really happening up here. And so again, I want you guys to definitely say good morning. I'm in Texas, so it is cold down here. (laughs) I'm pretty sure the people up north is not, but it definitely is cold. So I'll, I'll be drinking my hot coffee this morning as I chit chat Um, with you guys. So if you are one that you found yourself saying, you know, or believing that you have to fake it until you make it, the people that I tend to draw, right, or attract are people that are seasoned. They are ones that um, you know, they have experience. Oh, hold on one second, guys. I'm having some tech issues. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Okay, I'm good. Um, you know, they are already seasoned. They they already have some sort of um, experience, right? And so, you know, I keep hearing people say this, and I think that it puts you in the mindset for one of feeling like you do have, like you do have to be fake, right? To some extent, but what it does is that it does not allow you to lean on your expertise or your results or the successes that you may already have, and so you get into this motion of you feeling like you have to play this whole catch up game, right? And with that, it doesn't allow you to really own what you've already done. And so I want to talk about this this morning because, you know, as you are wanting to advance, you have to be careful of how you even talk about yourself or what you even think about what you've already done. And I do understand that when, you know, this whole saying started, it started from a good place, right? The place was, it's very important for you to like have faith in yourself and things of that sort and and not allowing um, skills or traits or, or things that maybe you don't have to stop you from having a desire or even a belief that you can reach your goals, right? But again, I think just I think that that mindset can serve you in certain environments, but when you are operating in corporate America, I just don't, I just, I believe that it has the opposite effect on you. And now you may think that, hey, I don't really live by that saying, right? But I definitely want to share some signs with you that even though you may have never heard yourself say that, you can still kind of operate off of the same belief of feeling like you have to fake it until you reach that goal, right? And so for one, if you if you find yourself not feeling sure about your experiences or those results or those past successes, right? You may have told yourself that you are 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 in this space to where you have to not how can I put it? It's like you can find yourself in a space to where you feel like you really can't own something because in your mind, you have not reached this standard of what you feel like is great or good. But in that, it causes you to not even think about or lean on what you've already done. Also, if you are um, always in this mindset where you start feeling like you will be found out, right? That's where this whole like imposter syndrome comes from, where you can find yourself in a place to where you keep feeling like a fraud. You keep feeling like um, they will find out that I'm not who I say I am. And that's why I think that whole mindset of you having to fake it, right? It, It causes you to believe that you are not something that you already are, right? And, you know, if you are one that you you are afraid to maybe share ideas at work or you are afraid to maybe like give feedback because you are afraid that they may not feel like what your skill set is or that feedback is not good. You have now trained yourself to believe that, hey, you know, i I don't think I have everything I need, even though they hired you, even though you are able to 
show up in that role and bring forth results, you are like always living in this mindset to where you feel like they might find out something, right? So, and it's like, you're, you have to ask yourself, what, what is it that I'm waiting for them to find out that you are skilled, right? That, that you are, that, that you have experience and, you know, and it's not saying that every job role that you have, that you will know the full scope of that job. But what it is saying, right, is that you give yourself an opportunity to embrace those seasons when you have to learn. You learning something does not mean you are fake, right? You having to, um, you know, maybe learn learn a new skill set or having to fill in gaps does not mean that you are faking it. That's why I don't like that Fake it until you know you're not faking anything. You didn't get this far in your career by faking anything, right? But as you may move into something that is new for you, you have to be able to embrace those seasons of you having to learn something, of you having to 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 operate in a new space and give yourself that grace. And so if you go in with the mindset of thinking that I have to act like I know something or I have to show up in a way to where they will see me as what I think I am or what I should be, right? Now you get into this mindset that any results that you bring forth are not real. And it is. And so, you know, I know that we we are now in a society where, you know, we see things happening for people so fast, right? We see, hey, y'all, um, we see things happening for people so fast. And so in our minds, we say that if I can't bring forth results that fast, that must mean that there is something wrong with me. But I want to say this first, don't believe everything that you see online, right? Because it's easier for people to share those highlights, right? It's easy for folks to only want to show what they reaped, but they do not show you what they have sown. And so you start feeling like, well, if I can't see success that fast, that means that I'm doing something wrong. And that's not the case, right? What I want you to start thinking about is, you know, for one, take your eyes off of what everybody else is doing, right? And two, get comfortable with being in a season where you do have to learn something, where you do have to grow, where you find yourself having to operate in spaces that that will require you or it will it will ask you of something that maybe you don't have. And that's why, you know, I talk about all the time how your worth is not in what you do for other people. Your worth is not what you do um, at work. Because in any time in that, if you don't feel like I cannot bring forth results as I once did, you start feeling like there is something wrong with you, right? And and it's not, but it's like, you know, when you have trained yourself to believe that you have to be the one that always knows what is right. You have to be the one that you have to know how to fix it. You have to be the one. And this, this happens a lot right? When you are the one that everybody comes to when they need something, you are the one that solves everything at work, with your family, with your friends, right? And so you have trained yourself that anytime I cannot operate at 100%, anytime where I am not sure, right, of what it is, um, like, excuse me, like anytime you feel like I am not sure of how to solve something, you start feeling like there's something wrong with you, but it's not. You have put that weight on yourself to believe that the only way, right, that I'm good, that I feel sure is if I know. But there will be seasons in your career, in your life where you where you will not know, right? Where you will be unsure, where you will have to grow, where, where you will have to, to allow something to come forth that you don't have. And this is why your, how can I put it, your confidence cannot be in, right? In you believing that you know everything. It has to be in. If it's something that I do not know, I know how to go out and find it, right? I know how to um, find find how that thing is done. That That is what it should be in, not in that you know everything off top. Because as you start advancing 
in your career. And th this is why people find it really hard to be them, like to be just, just real or to show up as them because you feel like if I show up as me, then that means that I have to know everything. And that's you putting too much weight on yourself and you, you are robbing yourself of the experiences, right? Of being able to look back on the areas that you have grown. Because I've seen it all the time, even with the clients I work with, especially, you know, when you are one that you are smart and you are really, really quick on your feet, you are a high performer. Friend, it get hard for you to, for one, even think about the great things that you have already done because you're already in pursuit of what is the next great thing that I can do because you can train yourself to think that your value is based upon that. But there's so much value that you can add even when you start understanding like, wait a minute, I don't know everything. I, I can't do everything and allowing yourself to rest in that. Right. And that's what's going to allow you to be able to show up and make the impact that you desire, because you are not trying to prove that, you know, everything you are not trying to prove that you can solve everything. You understand this is the expertise that I have and this is how and these are the results that I bring forth with my expertise. And there's anything outside of that that I need to bring forth, I have the knowledge to find out how that's done, right? And so, and you can literally see this, right? And, and, and if and if this live stream has been good so far, I want you guys to, because I want to be sure that I'm adding value to you, but I want you to get out of that mindset because I promise you, if you are like that at work, you are like that at home, right? And I've been there feeling like the only way that, you know, what, what a good wife is, is a wife that does everything, right? And child, you get tired, okay? <laughs> there is power in you being able to embrace that you don't know everything, that you can't do everything, right? You will miss out on one, being able to form real relationships if you keep feeling like you have to be the one to do everything, right? You will, will miss out on opportunities, to learn the people around you and to really know who is your support system, right? When you don't learn how to embrace help, when you don't understand the value in letting people support you in seasons, especially if you're one that you are always pouring out and you are the one always having to give and you are the always the one that's making sure that everybody else is okay, you miss out on being able to experience how it feels to be served by the people around you. You miss out on um, being able to see how much the people around you care for you. And then you find yourself saying things like, people don't do anything for me. Well, for one, you don't ask, right? And two, you have trained the people around you to believe that you don't need help. You can do it all, right? And then you wonder why people keep pouring their problems and their issues and their concerns on you, even though you know that you you are at a capacity that you cannot bear this anymore, but they keep on pouring things on you because you have trained them that you can bear it all. But the reality is, is that you can't, right? And so even in your career, when you start thinking about ways to where you can show up as you, right? Don't, and you don't have to fake anything. Again, you did not get this far in your career by faking anything. There's nothing about you that's fake, right? And so being able to embrace that, the curve of learning, being able to move into new seasons in your career and in new roles and embrace the fact and get excited about being able to learn something. And it's especially you who have to lead a team. You have to be able to understand how to learn something, the mindset and and what needs to be in place for you to learn. Because the only way that you can teach anybody, lead anybody, you have to know what it takes to learn, right? You have to have the skills to translate something in a way to where people can hear, right? Something and grasp what it is that they need and bring forth the result. But the only way that happens is, is if you sit in the learning seat, if you take off this chain and ball of thinking that you have to know everything because you don't, right? And so with you having this mindset of fake it until you make it, you lose out on opportunities 
to ask for help. You lose out on the opportunities for you being able to be authentic, right? For you being able to understand that even in my moments where I may not be sure, even in my moments where I may not know this thing yet, I'm still valuable. You miss out on being able to validate yourself because what happens is that you will allow this feeling of I know it all, I can do it all to validate you. So in those seasons when you cannot do it all and you don't know it all, now you are unsure because you have allowed that to to validate you when you should have been validating yourself without all of these external things in the way, right? I've seen, I've seen people in high rank roles, even the clients that I work with, great results, great successes, still thinking, still feeling like they will find me out, still having to live with a feeling of what if they if they think that I am a fraud. And that's because people have allowed performances to validate their expertise rather than being able to look back and, and say, I did this and own it. I know it's hard, friend. I, I, I know it's hard. Own what you've done, right? Because it's one thing to be aware of your expertise and the skills that you have and the results. It's another thing to own it, right? When you own something, mean that you fully claim it. And when you fully claim something, nothing can take that from you. So in seasons where maybe you haven't been able to show up as you would like to, because we know that life lives, right? In seasons where you may be in spaces, that they don't give you the props that you deserve, that you do not get the acknowledgments of your expertise as you should. Even in those seasons, you can still show up and be confident because you have already owned what you've done and you're not waiting for somebody else to come and own that, right? In those seasons where maybe, you know, you have been laid off out of the blue, you have been looking for a job, you have not been able to land the job that you want just yet, but you are now in a season to where maybe you have to take a survival job, right? This something it's not it's not really something that I want to do, but child, these bills are starting to pile up. I got kids, I got stuff going on, I gotta do what I gotta do. So you are now in a survival job, but even but when you own your expertise in those seasons where you're not operating as you would like to operate, you still know I'm valuable. You still know the impact that you make with your skills. You still know, right, that when you show up, right, you show out. And that's important to be able to own that because it's going to affect the moves that you make. You'll find yourself always in this place of wanting to do what looks right, right? You find yourself in a place to where you know what you want, super, super clear, but you're like, is this okay, right? You will live a, a, you will operate in your career and even live a life that will be permission-based, meaning like you feel like you have to, to, to get the approval of the people around you in order, in order to pursue what it is that you want because you haven't owned it, right? And this does take you having to kind of look back and, and, and understand and see, wait a minute, it's some mindset shifts here that, I need to make. There are some beliefs that I've told myself that I need to 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 fix and to switch. Right. Because you you know, and I know people don't really don't like to really talk a lot about this, but I don't think people know how powerful like being vulnerable is. Now, when I say that, I'm I'm not saying, child, you know, you at work and you all crying and you sharing everything. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what, what, what I'm talking about is, like I said before, you being able to admit that you don't know all the answers. You don't know how that will allow people to trust you. And this is why you may struggle with being able to connect with the people that you work with, right? Because you do have on this show or this mask, whatever you want to call it, of I don't need nothing. I got it. But you don't know that when you're able to admit that, hey, I don't know everything, that invites people in. And through that, they trust you. Like how many times, right, have you seen somebody online and when folks be looking too, you just look too perfect. You look too you just look too polished, too. And when I say look, I'm not talking about like the outside. I'm talking about like their life. You'd be like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I don't know. Right. You know, you start being like, mm, 
I just don't know, right? Because you know that things in life happen. You know that, you know, everybody got things happening, right? And so when you see somebody that 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 kind of puts on that everything is perfect all the time, that they don't ever go through nothing, that they don't experience loss or hardships, you, you start thinking that's cute, but I like them, but I can only really get with them so far, right? Like now with this whole Will Smith thing, child. I'm tired of seeing that on my news feed. I'm just like, with the whole Will Smith and his wife, and now they're saying that they they haven't been um, in a relationship with each other for the last six, seven years. People are like, <laughs> they just look so like, that's the problem, right? When, when you start putting on, it's not to say that you got to go share all your business, but what it is saying is that sometimes having on that that look of I'm good I don't need anything it will push people away right because it's by like it's by human design almost right for for most people that people do want to feel involved and engaged in some way it doesn't have to be like on a really deep space or or but people do want to feel involved with you on some way and it's like with 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 human design we tend to connect with people in a way that maybe we 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 want to connect with people through like I don't want to say like weak areas because I don't believe in trauma bonding but you tend to to relate more to people when you feel like they have experienced some of the things in some way that you have, right? And so at work, if you're one that you're always just on, you don't want to be able to admit when you don't know the answer to something or you can't fix something, you know, it puts people in a place as to where she doesn't need anybody. And these are the kind of people that will start feeling lonely, but you don't realize that you have push people away without knowing it, right? And that this can happen at work. This can happen in your marriage. It can happen with your kids. It can happen in every kind of relationship in your life because you don't have any other way to connect with people outside of what do you need me to do for you? And you don't allow them, like I was saying before, allow them a space to serve you. And this can affect you, especially if you're having to lead a team, it'll be hard to build trust with your team. Because if you are not open with with things that you may struggle with or not know with or be unsure, how are you able to create a space for them to feel like that with you? And then you wonder why I just cannot connect with my team in a way that I would like to, because you have put that wall up. And I always say, you know, when it's like whatever you want from somebody, you need to be that for them so they can see it, you know, because when, when you just say what it is that you need, it can be hard for, for people to, to really know what that means. But when they see it in you, bam, they fully understand. Right. And so as we talk about you not faking it until you make it, I really hope this live stream can put something in your mind where you won't ever say that again in life. <laughs> So what I want you guys to think about is not faking it, but I want you to think about facing it, right? I'm going to say it again. I don't want you guys to think about faking it. I want you guys to think about facing it, right? So if there is an area in your career where you don't feel as sure as you would like to, right? You don't feel like, I, I just don't feel like I have my hands on this in a way that I would like to, because everybody likes to feel sure. I'm not saying that, you know, that you should not want to feel sure because everybody wants that, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But my point is like, what happens to your belief about yourself when you don't feel sure about yourself, right? So if there is areas to where you don't feel as sure, right? I want you to lean, lean into that feeling, right? For one, I want you to really see, is this really a problem that you have? Because, you know, how you feel I'm not going to say it's not true because I do believe sometimes the feelings that we have, it, it, it does ring some truth, meaning that there is something happening there that is allowing you to feel that way. But I will say this is that just because something is true does not mean that it is right. 
right? But and so when it comes to your feelings, your emotions, and even when you're operating your career, and it may be areas in your career and your skills where you do not feel as sure as you would like to feel. I want you to, to really think about that and lean into that feeling and start to ask yourself, what is it that is making me feel unsure if this feeling is true? Do I have any kind of fact, anything that I can lean on or, or use anything to support me feeling this way? And is this feeling true? Because when you are, are insecure, in, in certain in certain things, you can start to to train yourself to really believe things that are not true. For instance, if you're at work and you're like, girl, I just cannot really, really connect with the people, right? Or or build relationships in a way that I know that I should. Well, if you if you are already insecure about how you think they see you, right? That will create this mindset of, I don't know how to do this well. And it's not that you lack the skill in being able to be relationships. It's just that because you are a very insecure and you are not sure about how they, how they feel about you, you now hold back. And so it doesn't really allow you to operate in that skill, but the skill is there, but it's just because you are insecure about what they think about you. It'll make you feel like I just can't do that. And that's why it's about being able to get rid of those beliefs, right? And really look at those beliefs that you have and and see what fact or proof do I have to even support that this is true? Why is it that I feel like this is a weak spot for me? Why is it that I feel like I cannot thrive in this? Is this more about a skill or is it more about a belief that I have about myself that is stopping me from being able to operate in this skill as I would like to? It's two separate things, right? And so with that, when you're able to like look at those opportunities, right? That you may feel unsure, you are able to dig into those, right? And get clear. And so now you may not have to spend a whole, whole lot of time trying to learn how to do something that you really already know how to do, especially when you build other relationships in your life or, or even, even your career just fine. It's just when it gets to these people, you just struggle with it. Why? What is it about them? Right. And so, you know, a lot of feeling unsure, again, it could be based upon old experiences that you have faced at work. It could be based upon you not being able to get feedback in a way that you should be because everybody don't give feedback the right way. Okay, So if you're at work and you have gotten feedback, you, you have to even be in a place and be self-aware enough to know that is this feedback, does this ring true? But the only way that, that you can do that is when you have allowed yourself to be self-aware and also you have, you have started to get rid of these insecurities because insecurities can speak louder than the truth, right? And this is where you can find yourself being in a place to where you start feeling like everybody is against me. I don't know if I have enough. I don't know. And, and you're doing amazing things, right? That that should be the fact and the results and the proof that you rest on is what you've already done. But most times than not, People will lean more on what they think other people think or or those past those past maybe experiences that you've had at work. And then this will make your career shaky, right? You won't be able to make strategic moves that's going to lead you towards the goals that you want because it's not about strategy. It's about I have to make sure that I look right. I have to make sure that everybody around me feels that I am right. And that is how you end up with somebody else's career. Worrying about what other people are going to be, right? This is how you will, will end up in a place to where you like, how did I get here? Child, I don't want to do this. How did I get here, right? You'll end up like that. Because the moves that you have made has been based upon what you think other people think is right. I, I had a call with um, with one of my clients and that was something that, you know, that me and her like really dug into. Like, let's get to like the root of your goals. Like, where did these goals come from? Right. Because I'm like, I'm like, as, as you're sitting here and you sh and you are sharing with me your goals, I don't see any excitement about it. I don't see any kind of just... When I say excitement, it doesn't mean you have to be hopping up and down, but I didn't see I didn't see her 
connecting with her goals whatsoever. So I had to, you know, I ask questions. So with my clients, I never tell them what to do. I just know how to ask the right questions. That's it, right? I help you to dig deeper. I, I will help you to go to places that maybe you don't want to go or, or you didn't know that you needed to go to to get the information that you need. And so I started to ask her her questions. Where did these goals come from? How long have you had this? What made you pick this goal, right? And so as we started to like deep dive into her goals, that's when she started those light bulbs started going off in her mind, right? She was like, I, I don't want this. It's okay. So, you know, if you if you have realized it's something that you don't want, right? Why why have you put so much into striving for it? And this is what she said. She said this this is just the way that I saw it. When you when you are in this role, you go to here next, right? And that's why I don't like the whole ladder. Climbing the ladder. And I use it sometimes, right? When I'm talking about being able to advance, but I try not to because, you know, when you think about a ladder, like the steps are already there for you, you know? I don't know about you. Well, let me say this. I probably only climbed the ladder, child, probably like two, three times in my life. But the times that I did climb a ladder, like I wasn't like paying a, a lot of, like there wasn't a lot of thought because I'm like, the step is right there, girl. Just step up, step up, step up, step up, right? But, and that's why I don't like that term in your career because it keeps you thinking that your career has to go a certain way. It has to look a certain way, right? That it that there, it's like this one, two, three step, right? And it keeps you from being intentional because it's hard to be intentional with something when something is already when you feel like something is already predestined for you, it's just hard. To, it's just like it it almost robs you of being able to explore in your career and see what other opportunities are out there. And so, you know, when you think about a ladder, I just don't like what that puts in people's mind. Right. Because we've all have been taught this way. Right. We all have been taught. Oh, when you are in your career, it goes like X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Right. What happens is that you set goals based upon what is written, right? Or what is the right thing to do and it's not the real thing. It's not what you you really want. And so I think it's important that when you think about being able to advance in your career, like this this is your career. You you write the rules. You set the terms. You decide what's next for you. You decide what's not next for you. I saw, I've seen people will go you know, because they're in this position and they say, okay, well, that next role is this. And you know you don't want that. <laughs> or you just know that I just want to serve in a different way. But it can be hard to own that because you start feeling like you are breaking rules. You're you're not breaking any rules. You are just able to, to define your career the way that you want it. And I know that that can be scary, especially when you are doing something that maybe you haven't seen a lot of people do, right? And so as you start thinking about where you are in your career and how you're wanting to advance in your career, I want you to really start, really start thinking about this. What do you feel that those gaps are? And are those gaps real, right? And I want you to think about not, how can I put it? Like, I want you to really start thinking about how is it that you are able to align your your career, not just where you are, but I want you to start aligning it with where you want to be. And I think if when you have your mindset on not the things that you because you can find yourself, oh, excuse me, you can find yourself, you can find yourself in a place where you're always in this chase of I gotta add something on. I have to get this new thing, this new this new skill. And you miss out on the value of what you already have, right? But even with that, you know, I'm not saying to be content in what you have, meaning I'm done. I've learned everything that I think I can learn. I don't need anything else. What I am saying is that when you think about planning out your career, I want you to start thinking about like, you know, where is it that I really want to be? And don't just align your actions with where you are now, because that is how you get stuck. That is how you plateau. That is how you start getting underpaid. That is how those skills start getting stale, right? But I do want you to start to align align your the actions that you take with where you want to be. Now, if you don't know where you want to be, it's really important to start taking time to start thinking about that. Because again, I'm not saying to plan out the next 
100 years, right? Or the next even five years. Just thinking about what's next for you. So if you thinking about what is the that that end goal is for you, if that's just too overwhelming, you're like, child, I don't, I don't even know what's going to happen next week. That's fine. <laughs> but at least start thinking about what's next for you. Start setting the expectation for what is next for you. Start setting, right? Um, what is the standard for what's next for you? What is it that you want to leave behind, right? And what is it that you want to actually keep? And what is it that you need to improve on? Because as you advance, as you, this is in your career, in your life, right? As you move on to something new, it is going to require something new of you. And for a, a lot of us, it really is growth. It really is us having to shift mindsets and the way that we see ourselves or, or even the people that we work with is going to take that shift. But the question I want you to ask yourself is, are you willing to make that shift, right? Are you willing to look at yourself and say, okay, what, what could be those areas that are stopping me from being able to reach the level of success? And again, that's your version of success, right? that you choose to reach. And don't think about all the things you need to do, right? But start thinking about who is it that you need to be and not just be a good employee, right? But what is it that you need in order to be the person that you need to be that is going to serve you in every area of your life? That's the, what the focus needs to be. Like, what is it that I need to be that will, will that will allow me to be served in every area of my life? Not just in your career, but but just overall success, a a version of a holistic success, because that's what's going to make you feel good. That is what's going to allow you to thrive when all when all areas of your life. Right. Align when 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 all areas of your life allows you to 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 show up and thrive as you desire to. Because, again, it's not about putting on this mask anymore. And it's not about you having to conform to some standard that you heard of. But it's about you being able to, to really write this thing out right, in a way that is going to align with what you need and what your true expectations are. And so that is what the thought process needs to be. Not your resume, right? But start to look for ways that you you can be served. Again, like I said, I said when I first started, you you got the expertise. You you have showed up and you've already showed up. You have made sacrifices already to get to where you are now, right? You have already had to sit in rooms that child you know that you didn't want to be in, right? You, you've already had to bite your tongue and hold back from from saying ideas or, or feedback, and you've you've already done that, right? You 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 have already put your dreams and desires on hold. You've you've already done that. Now this this next this next season for you, this this next move, whatever that looks like, need to be okay. How is it, or what is it that I need to have in place to make sure? Right, that this next move serves me. And, and that next move can be whatever you want it to be. That can be a new job. That can be you having to advance in the role that you have now. It can be, uh, you know, you can find yourself saying, I just want to change. It can be you being able to like build up the skills that you need. Whatever that next move is, just make sure that it's done on your terms. Because what can keep happening is this hamster wheel, right? It it just it's just it's just it just can't keep going on because you will you will exhaust yourself to where there is nothing left. And when you do that, you'll feel like I don't have time to 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 think about me or my goals or any of that because you've wasted all of your your strength on building something for somebody else, right? And I think that we all can agree that you deserve more than that. So with this next move, with you being able, because for some people, your next move could be, I just want to get clear. It's time to operate in my in my career with clarity. That could be your next move, right? Let me take some time and think about what it is that I want. Let me take some time and map some stuff out. Let me take some time and really get clear on what 
are these blind spots that keeps causing me to hit this glass ceiling. I just cannot figure out what is keeping me stuck. That, that can be your next move, right? It could be, be whatever that needs to look like, but just make sure that you go in with your eyes wide open and not being afraid to maybe look at some things and not being afraid to hold yourself accountable. Because there are some times you have to be able to, to look at yourself and say, I got I got myself here. Like that is the one of the most empowering things that, that you can do for yourself is hold yourself accountable. Because when you can hold yourself accountable, I promise you, you will not make that mistake again. But when you keep making yourself a victim of the results that you've gotten in your life, you will continue to make those same mistakes over and over and over and over and over again. Being able to own it. The, sa the same way I told you to, to own your expertise, I am telling you to own where you, where you are right now. So if you are burnt out, own it. Own it that you got yourself here by not being able to ask for what it is that you need and not being able to set boundaries. You did that. Own it. And so now when you can own it, you can change it. But if you do not own it, you cannot change it. Own the fact that you may not be being paid the money that you know that you should have been paid a long time ago. Own it and say, you know what, for one, I do not ask for more. So if I'm not asking for more, how do I expect more? For two, I am. I have been the one sitting around waiting for somebody to see my value rather than owning it, right? All of this, if you realize that maybe I don't have, you know, that, that work-life, um, that work-life alignment, that I really, really want own it. The reason why I don't have this is because I have been a yes man. I feel validated when I can say yes to everything. Own the fact that you have not been able to see the power in saying no. Own it. And so when you're able to own it, you can change it. You can put yourself in a position to say that I will never go through that again. Because there, there, there are some pains and hurts. Child, they hurt. Oh, they hurt. Oh. Mm -mm. Sometimes you think, my God, I can't believe I cannot believe I wasted so much time. And it, it hurts at first to own that. Oh, but when you own it, you can also own the fact and say, I will never let myself play myself like that ever again. And that is empowering. But it, it does take some work. It takes you being able to be self-aware. It takes you being able to get rid of the excuses. It takes it takes that. It really does take that. But once you make that leap, everything in your life changes. Even you, even you, everything in your life is going to change because you are not leaning on excuses anymore, right? But now you are leaning on purpose. You are able to lean on being intentional because you have, you have, uh, can't even say that you have begun to remove all of the excuses because that is what keeps you from being able to be intentional is them excuses. That's what's keeping you back from the money that you want. Them excuses, that is what's keeping you back from being able to make the impact that you want to make with your, with your skills. It's them excuses. It's excuses. When you say, you know what, I've had enough of these excuses. I say, I'm not bringing a not near one excuse. And 2024, okay? So if you will not bring any excuses into next year or even into next week, even until some, you say, you say next week, I'm not bringing in no more. No more excuses, right? And once you get to that point where you're not operating at a level of you having excuses, now, now you make room. You make room for what you say that you want. So I hope this live stream serves you this morning. I definitely, if you have any questions, you guys know that you can drop those. I do go live on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so um, if you want to catch any of my um, lap, my past live streams, go to my channel on YouTube and subscribe. And I am Alicia Perkins. You can find that as well. I do have a podcast called Career Revamp. You can, um, we drop episodes on there every Thursday as well. So find me on, what is that? Apple Podcasts, Shopify, all of them under Career Revamp. 
So do you guys have any questions? And if you guys are wanting to work with me one-to-one, let me know. The thing that I do do with my clients that I help them to maximize their skills so they are able to increase their income and their impact, okay? And so if, if you're wanting to work with me, let's schedule a call to see if we are a good fit for each other. For more information on how to work with me, go to IamAliciaPerkins.com to find out more. So I'm good. I see all these no excuses rolling in. Yes, 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 yes. No more excuses. No, 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 no. No more excuses. I had a post that I made, I think it was last week, but um, I shared something and the post said, it said that there are folks out there who are less qualified doing what you are doing and people are paying them for it. And it said that um, it said that you need to operate in, what is it? You need to operate in, in, in excellence just as much as they do being mediocre. Child, it's folks out here who don't have half the skills that, half the brain, okay? Half the, half of nothing. They, and they out here doing what you wish you could do. It is, I am Alicia Perkins.com. If you go in my link in my, bio is there, but it's I am and that's A L I C I A Perkins.com. But they they are here with with half a brain doing things that you wish you could do. And you don't just have enough, you got more than enough. And you scared. Ain't no way. And ain't ain't no way. Y'all, it is time out for being the best kept secret. It's, I'm gonna say it again. It's time out for being the best kept secret. It's it's just time out. <laughs> that's not cute. That's not serving you. That's not, um, that is not bringing you closer to your goals, none whatsoever. All right. It's time for you to own what you have done and will do. And if there's anything that you may not have, own the fact that you can go get it. And that's it. Um, I don't see any more questions. Well, okay, y'all. Well, if there's no more questions, again, I do go live on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And um, can remember to subscribe to my channel on YouTube for more information. If you do want to, um, to receive updates from me and advice throughout the week, go to um, to Career T. That's Career T E A dot Me dot com and 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 subscribe to make sure that you guys can stay in the know. Okay, and so until next time, bye.